Hey everybody, earlier I reviewed and kind of gave a walkthrough of iTunes 10 along with its new feature, Ping. And honestly, I only really looked at Ping because it's probably the biggest thing that they added to iTunes in the update on their September 1st event uh, this Tuesday. So what else do they add? Well, they have an entire new lineup of iPods and I'm going to give an overview of those and um, their price ranges, their changes, my opinions on them, and um, just kind of look at what they've done to their new lineup for those of you who don't want to watch the keynote video. It's actually three hours long, and at the end they had the lead singer of Coldplay, who I can't remember his name, but he did a pretty good job. Anyway, here is the new Shuffle, and uh, honestly, it looks kind of like the second generation Shuffle. Two generations ago, this is pretty much what it looked like, slightly bigger, but honestly, I think it's a better change back from the old battery-like looking Shuffle, because that was far too small, this is much more manageable, and I think the controls are much more user-friendly than just using relying on the headphones. And this makes it so that they can use the old controls that they used with their shuffles, but if they choose, they can use them much easier to use controls on this shuffle. It features, as you can see over here, I can't really zoom in much because I don't have too many photos of it. However, you can see that it does have, well, let's go to, oh, well, gotta find a picture of it that works. Right here it has volume buttons on the device, which make it much easier to change the volume without using your headphones if you choose not to or if it's plugged in somewhere else. It still has the clip, so you can clip on anything, your clothes or whatever you want to clip it to. And um, not much you can say, it still starts at $49 for the two gigabyte model, that's the only one they're selling. So the iPod shuffle is back to normal pretty much, and I think it would be a great buy just because the controls are back where they should be. Now the next one I'm gonna move on to is probably the most uh, controversial iPod, I could say. I don't know if it'd be controversial, but the one people are most talking about, both positively and negatively, and that is the new iPod Nano. And um, as you can see, the iPod Nano looks kind of like the shuffle. Let's just do a little comparison here. I'm going to drag this window out, and uh, maybe not the same size. I'm going to an Apple store tomorrow, and I will take some pictures to show you guys, you know, in my hand, even though my hands are pretty big just to show you uh, what these things look like. But um, they look pretty similar. Uh, only difference is, well, there's a couple differences. You can see that it looks kind of like an iPod Touch, and that's because it does have multi-touch display on the front. So this will have multi-touch with it. Um, you know, from looking at it in the keynote, it looked pretty user-friendly um, because Jobs' hands are, you know, relatively the same size as mine, I'm assuming, just because I have average male hands. But... Um, the only big drawback is you're getting an iPod Shuffle with a touch screen for a hundred bucks more at 149, and I don't know. Let's see what um, they go up to. I think they start at eight gigabytes and they go to 16 for 179. They come in all sorts of colors, just like the old iPod Nano, but um, it's a dramatic change. I can't say whether or not I actually like them, but my first impression is I, I mean, the only thing you're getting more is a touchscreen and more space, but you're not actually getting a true multi-touch display because, I don't know, it's not, an, it's not an iPod Touch, it's a very small screen. So I'm pretty skeptical about this device. Um, if we go back to the mini site, I can show you some of the features it does have other than just the touchscreen. Let's go into design. So it's relatively small. It's probably a little longer than the earbud, both in height and width and incredibly thin, as you can see over here. It also comes with a clip, which is pretty nice, I guess, considering a lot of people buy Nano, so they have a small iPod with a lot of space that they can use when they're working out or running or whatever. So I guess, you know, it's not all bad. Uh, it does come with an FM AM radio tuner. Uh, let's see what else here. It does not have Wi-Fi capability still, but on here it has the lock button, the clip, and the two volume rockers. And... But yeah, it is very small. I'm starting to really get the idea of how just how small this thing is because um, I have my iPod 30 pin connector next to me and that's really small. It's, you know, hardly wider than that. So that is the new iPod Nano. You know, not much I can say about it until um, I come back from the store tomorrow and I'll probably write uh, a follow-up review to this. But yeah, right now, I'm, I wouldn't personally buy one. So now we're going to move on to the iPod Touch, which was updated as well on Tuesday. And it's a pretty big change. Not something that wasn't expected, though. 
The new iPod Touch now features a video camera and the legendary Retina display, which is huge because the Retina display is just ridiculously awesome. So let's look at some photos here. You can see already the camera here and the camera on the back. There's only a microphone on the back, though. That makes sense just to make it, I don't know, probably, you know, so you're not shouting it a little bit. But the camera on the front means that you can do Skype or, well, technically FaceTime calls with other iPod Touch users. I'm assuming you can use Skype on it to Skype, you know, your laptop or whoever uses Skype. And you can, use, uh, you can use FaceTime with other iPhone users. It's incredibly thin. At the keynote, he showed the uh, old, the previous uh, predecessor model to this. And the back came about out here at the most. And we already know those are pretty freaking thin. But, I mean, this I mean, this is where the old one was. And that was ridiculously thin. I mean, how much thin are they going to make this thing before you hold it and it snaps in half? But, you know, I guess that's their problem. Um, they also added a new thing called Game Center, which is their social network for gaming on the iPod Touch. Because it is now officially, according to Apple, the number one gaming device in the world. Not sure if I believe that, but, you know, I'll kind of go with it for now. Number one portable gaming device, I should say. Anyway, they, so they've added a number of updates to iOS 4, and they're also, for you iPad users, planning a special update to add multitasking and all the other great iOS 4 features to the iPad. The iOS 4.1 update includes Game Center and much more, which you can see at apple.com slash iPod Touch slash iOS 4. Um, I can't review it all now. I'm probably going to review it once I actually get my hands on an iOS 4 device. That way I can actually get a true feel for it because my iPod's too old to get the update. But um, the iPod Touches, they start at $230, $230 and go up to $399 for a 64 gigabyte model. And they all have the uh, standard features, whereas the old models, the 8 gigabyte model was not, didn't have the same features, which I didn't get, but you know. Uh, finally, we're going to go to the Apple TV. Let's see that update. Got my link screwed up a little bit, so this may take just a second. It starts at $99 now, and let's go visit the Apple TV official mini sort of promo thing on here that they have a brand new interface for it. It comes with the new aluminum remote, and it's incredibly tiny. They uh, showed it in comparison to the old Apple TV, and they didn't just cut down on the price. It is now one-fourth the size of the original. The price went from $230 for the, uh, I think the lowest model, to just $99. And now they're doing everything over streaming. They have very simple ports in the back, which I'll show you in just a second. You can do net Netflix streaming and what they call AirPlay, which was previously AirTunes. So you can stream your music, movies, and TV shows, and whatever else you have. Photos is what I was trying to think of. To your Apple TV for viewing on your widescreen TV. And real quick, let's just show you the ports and things that they've added to the rear. This is probably the only shot I can get of it. But they have a power, AC power adapter. They have um, your HDMI cable input. And they also have an Ethernet cable, but it does come equipped with Wi-Fi for those of you who probably want to use that over Ethernet because you probably don't have an Ethernet cord lying around, you know, snaking through your house. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll be reviewing much more from the Apple Tuesday event, hopefully, if I find anything else. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.